Hello, my name is Marty Kessler for BibleTalk.tv, and this is the second lesson in a series on apologetics. This one is entitled Neanderthal and Company. We're going to talk about the theory of evolution and the supposed ascendancy of man. And the chart you're looking at is what we have been sold. I say sold because it's something we bought into in a sense. I remember seeing this chart or a similar one back when I was in high school many, many years ago. And it's uh, present for all to see. It's been around in this form and in uh, other forms. Here's another chart that you might see. We've been told that this is what we are. We are a primate. Sometimes you'll talk about man from ape theory and somebody says, oh, we're not saying man from apes, but really they are. That's what the charts show. Something like a chimpanzee coming up to a man. And then here is a chart that says, in fact, <laughs> clearly states we are primates. And then we have other charts like this one, which clearly indicates we were once apes and we have ascended through a series of changes, evolutions to the point where we are today. It's dogmatically promoted everywhere. So let's take a look at this idea and what evidence there is for it. And you would think with six million years of human evolution having taken place, which is what we're told, we got to ask, where are all of the fossils? Why are there seemingly so few, so relatively few? Extant fossil evidence purported to be of man's ascendancy is relatively rare. And even the ones we have are often controversial. This is hardly a basis for the fact of man's mindless, unguided evolution. But that's what we are constantly being told and reinforced. So let's begin here with Mr. Neanderthal. These remains were named because they were found in the Neander Valley of Germany. And Mr. Neanderthal had similar brain capacity to modern humans and remains indicate that he walked erect. So we got to ask the question, why is, it not, why is he not considered to be uh, one of us, a human being? When you take a look at the representations back in the day for Neanderthal, these are what you see. Which picture is accurate? Both of them uh, are decidedly different, and these are not as different as others we can show. One of them looks just like kind of a gorilla with a club, and the other one looks like a, a man with a, a very prominent jawline. And then we've got other pictures, like this fellow pictured on the left. And then the picture on the right is of another supposed Neanderthal. They look decidedly different to me. I don't know about you. I think I saw that guy on the right at a truck stop a couple of weeks ago. At any rate, this is what is being put forth as uh, the appearance of Neanderthals. But this isn't all. What about this fellow here? Kind of a pensive looking guy. He's supposed to be a Neanderthal just like the previous four were. And what in the world is he thinking about? What is he considering? Maybe it's this Neanderthal babe. Yes, there's a Neanderthal woman likeness, and she's uh, in with the rest of them. So uh, what this tells us is they really don't know what they look like. They have ideas, they have theories, they have uh, imaginations, but that's really all this is. These are simply speculations about Neanderthal. But when you look at the facts about what has been determined or what's been discovered about Neanderthal, is that he walked erect like we do. He used animal skins for clothing. He made and used tools. He practiced ceremonial burial. And he had a brain capacity well within that of ours, modern day humans. So why in the world is he not considered a human? When you look at Neanderthal, that seems to be what we should conclude, that he was simply another human being. What about the Heidelberg man? We've got the Neanderthal man found in the Neander Valley of Germany. Here is a jawbone that was found in Heidelberg, Germany in 1907. And this gave rise to the idea of the Heidelberg man. While claims persist that he's a link in an evolutionary chain, the jawbone is now conceded to be human. So early drawings perpetuated this idea of man from monkey. Here's an artist's impression of what the Heidelberg man would have looked like. But then research prevailed, and here's another impression of what the Heidelberg man would have looked like. That almost looks like a photograph of a guy, but that is uh, simply a recreation in a museum. 
And you can see a little bit of a difference between these two pictures and the appearance of the Heidelberg man. One simply looks like an ape, a chimpanzee, while the other one looks like a guy you'd meet down at Bass Pro. So at any rate, we're talking about even more representations of the Heidelberg man. There's two, and you look at the facial features and uh, construction of the brow line and the jaw line. These guys look very different, so maybe they didn't know as much about the Heidelberg man as they think they do, especially when you think it's all based on a single jawbone that is decided to be human. So we got the Neanderthal man who certainly appears to be human. We've got the Heidelberg man who also appears to be human. What about the English? The English weren't about to be outdone by the Germans. I'm not suggesting that there was competition between the English and the Germans, but it just seems like you got two found in Germany and now here's the Piltdown Man. Uh, what are we looking at here? But a, a skull that was discovered, I say discovered with quotes, uh, by Charles Dawson, uh, not Charles Darwin, but Charles Dawson, rather, in a pit near Piltdown, England. This was in 1912. It was determined to be a fraud, however, in 1953, 40 years later. It was intentionally uh, made to look like something we would find if we were looking for human ancestors in the fossil record. It was not real. It was fraudulent. It was created and put forth to be uh, actually uh, a hoax, a joke. Uh, but it wasn't discovered until 40 years later. You can read the story behind the Piltdown Man, uh, and it's definitely been proven to be a fraud in 2016 with more modern scientific method being applied to it. So what about the 40 years uh, while it was still believed to be real? The imaginary Piltdown Man had all kinds of images on display in magazines, newspapers, and museums. There's one. The fellow looked like he's intently on the hunt with a spear. And here's another one that, my goodness, looks like an educated chimpanzee. He's working with a tool, but he looks quite a bit different to me than the fellow on the left. Of course, both of these guys are imagined images from uh, a skull that wasn't even real. But these aren't all the images of the Piltdown Man that have existed through the years. Just wanted to show you a couple of those there. So we've got the Neanderthal Man who was human. We've got the Heidelberg man who was human. We've got the Piltdown man who never actually existed. So it's so far not looking all that great for this idea of evolution being purported or reported in the fossil record. Let's look at Nebraska man. Nebraska man, is, uh, he's a little closer to home. We've been in Germany, we've been in England. Now we're coming to North America. I say closer to home for me. I don't know where you're watching this video from, but uh, I'm just south of Nebraska right now in Oklahoma, in the United States of America. And so our neighbor to the north had the Nebraska man, but they only had him for a while. Here's an image of the Nebraska man as it came to us uh, in scientific journals. His existence was based on a lone tooth found in Nebraska in 1917. He was heralded as, as evidence of the first higher primate in North America. Catch that again, higher primate. That's what we're being called. That's what it said that we are. Nothing more than monkeys. It was retracted, however, in 1927, and that was because the tooth was determined to be from a peccary or a pig. So we've got this corn husker who actually turned out to be a razorback. Now, you might not get that joke unless you're a fan of American uh, college football, but at any rate, people in the States might chuckle at that, but maybe not anybody else. So if you don't get that reference, my apologies, but I just couldn't pass it up. It was too good. At any rate, the Nebraska man, what about him? Well, he's a pig. So we've got Neanderthal, who was human. We've got Heidelberg, who, who was human. We've got the Piltdown man that never actually existed. And now we've got Nebraska man who turns out to be a pig. All right, where do we go from here? How about Java man? A tooth was discovered on Java in 19, or 1891, and then a skull cap was uncovered about a month later. Femurs and another tooth, and then a year later, about 15 meters away, 15 meters is about 45 to 50 feet, they found uh, teeth and femurs that appear to be human and a skull cap that resembles that of a large gibbon. And remember, these remains were found scattered. 
So we've got this controversy then about the Java man. Guys, uh, a couple of guys wrote this book about Java man trying to convince us that he was one of the ancestors of man. However, when you look at the cover of an updated version of their book, you see uh, a little bit misleading, I think, on the cover. There is a picture of a skull as if they had a skull. They don't have a skull of Java man. The remains are fragmentary. You saw those in the previous picture that that's really all they've got right there. And yet we see on the cover of this book that there was a skull. So they don't really have a skull. They have few remains and the Java man remains a big controversy. However, he still gets a museum. It's dogmatically reported and represented that he is part of the evolutionary chain, but I believe he is a link that's missing like really all the other links appear to be missing. So there we have the Java man. He's in there with Neanderthal, he was human, Heidelberg man who was human, the Piltdown man that didn't even exist, the Nebraska man which turned out to be a pig, and Java man which was likely a given. That's, that's where he stands in this rating. Then there's a claim for the Peking man. Peking, China. Digs in the area of Zucudian. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'll call it Zucudian because that's what it looks like to me. This was in China from 1921 to 1936. These, uh, this work was taking place and they uncovered a few teeth and some skull caps. From these remains, the alleged Peking man arose and the remains, however, have since been lost. That happened in probably about 1941. Replicas are all that is left. Replicas of what they believed the skull would have looked like. So we've got this problem that the Peking man, the original remains, are gone. So this is from an Apologetics Press article entitled Peking Man, Another Missing, Missing Link. As Colin Patterson, the late paleontologist, admitted several years ago, try though they might with over a century of fossil searching by evolutionists, and then we begin the quote from Colin Patterson, there is not one, and then the word transitional is added by the author, Jeff Miller, fossil for which one could make a watertight argument. And this is quoted in Sunderland from 1984, page 89. So, not one. Missing links? That's the question. Are they missing links? Or are they simply the remains of humans or some other creatures that have been put forth as missing links? Neanderthal was human. Heidelberg man was human. Piltdown man didn't exist. Nebraska man was a pig. Java man was probably a given. And then there's Peking man for whom the evidence is missing. So here's some considerations as we bring this presentation to a conclusion. Evolutionists are biased in their beliefs. Just like the rest of us are biased in what we believe, they are also biased in their beliefs. And number two, funding and advancement in paleontology is often based on success in the field. And I'm not putting this up there to say that these guys are telling us lies intentionally. I'm simply saying that there is a tendency towards uh, the desire to find things that may not be there based on the fact that if you want funding for your project, you've got to be successful. If you want to advance in your field as a paleontologist or other researcher, you've got to have some degree of success. You've got to have something to show for your work. And number three, there really are very few fossils for the millions of years that we are told humans were advancing and evolving. And number four, how many Unknown species of apes have gone extinct, and are those the remains that we are finding? Not of human ancestors, but simply of apes that used to exist that may not exist anymore, or even apes that still exist. It, uh, it is a question that needs answering. And then number five, given the great variety of present humans, or in present humans, how many have also ceased to exist? How many different kinds of humans, if you will. I mean, we're talking about the, the pygmies in one place and uh, the seven foot tall uh, tribesmen of Africa in another place. We've got a great degree of difference in humanity. I mean, if you take the shortest person that you know, who's a regular human being and you compare him to the tallest NBA player, and then you take their uh, 
you know, 10,000 years, let's say you find their fossil remains, you might say that the taller one ascended from the lower one when in fact they both existed at the same time. There was no question about uh, their presence as human beings and that they're, they're very different physically in their appearance. And finally, uh, I just want to say the fossil evidence for the evolution of mankind is hardly convincing. I don't know about you, you can do your own research, but I just wanted to bring these commonly known uh, chains or, or links rather in the chain of human evolution that really are missing to your attention. May God bless.